<laughs> bang on time. <laughs> early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even better. Early, actually. How you doing? Good, good. Excuse the iPad cover. No problem. Okay, good afternoon. Same format, three sections today with the Sundays, and we'll start with Rebecca at Sky Sports. Cool, so first question, two big games you started with. What do you think worked better against Liverpool than it did against Manchester United last weekend? Well, um, we didn't concede so many goals, which obviously helps. There were some really good parts of the Manchester United game. They got lost in the result, but uh, not lost on me. Um, and so I didn't think we should lose any confidence after that game just to learn from the, the four errors that gave them goals they were very clinical about taking. The Liverpool goal was a game was a big test for us because for me they're one of the top teams in the world um, and we more than matched them. Um, physically we were really good considering we only had a short period of preparation for the game which I was so impressed with the work ethic of the players. Uh, and the way we moved the ball, uh, the chances we created, lots and lots of things that we've worked on in the last month, six weeks, uh, were there were big signs of them. So without getting carried away, because we've obviously lost the league game and we lost the Super Cup and penalties, but some really good signs. You must be hugely disappointed that out of the two games so far, you've lost both of them. Yeah, of course, because uh, this is Chelsea, come here um, wanting to win. We want to win every game we play. But you have to understand if you go to Old Trafford, you can lose the game. It's a competitive match and difficult. And as I say, if things have gone our way slightly earlier in that game, I think it may have been different, but that's that. Um, and then obviously with the Super Cup, we lost on penalties when in a game we should have won on, on uh, match play and the chances we created. So uh, I'm disappointed, but as I say, you go up against big teams, you can lose them. What's important is reactions. What's important is Leicester now at the weekend and uh, looking to get our first three points. Tammy Abraham, uh, we've seen that he experienced racist abuse online. Um, what's his response been to that? What's your response? And do social networks need to do more? Well, obviously Tammy's disappointed. Who wouldn't be more than disappointed? That's probably a, the wrong word. Um, I am particularly um, well, disgusted by a so-called Chelsea fan. I think it's very... To see the different ends of the spectrum of the evening, Tammy Abraham asked me to take the fifth penalty because he wanted to, to take it, wanted to stand up, wanted to be brave on a big night when the world is watching. And at the same time, within the moments or hours afterwards, somebody sitting behind a keyboard or a phone uh, has said the most disgusting things possible, um, you can say. So I don't know how these platforms are, it's allowed that people can do it. It's too easy um, to, to be done. Um, so something needs to be done as well as people obviously changing their mindsets completely. That might not be easy with everybody. But I'm so angry for Tammy, um, angry for us as a club because that's not what we're about. The club makes a lot of, does a lot of work against discrimination at all levels, um, and it's a setback when these things happen. Looking ahead to this weekend, then at Leicester, they obviously won this corresponding match last season. Um, how important is a win, and what do you make of from Rogers' side? Well, the win is obviously important. We want to win our, uh, all our games. As I said before, we want to win at home, um, considering we lost the first league game. So, yeah, it's, it's a big game for us um, in front of our, our home fans for the first time this season. Um, and with Brendan Rodgers, I know Brendan well. He's a fantastic manager. We've got a great group of players there. Nice mix of some top-quality young players and experienced players, and um, they'll be well coached. So we're going to have a big challenge. Can you talk us through the future of Richie Bletchley? Is the future is Mitch is here um, as one of our strikers and it's important for him because we know this year we had three strikers but there will be opportunities for him so with Mitch it's an important thing that he trains at the top top level every day gets himself absolutely fit to play the way I want uh, my strikers to play uh, which will be constant movement on and off the ball for us and obviously to try and score goals so yeah he's, he's very much our player and uh, competing with with particularly obviously Tammy and uh, and Oli for that, that space. Manchester City earlier on this week, they avoided a transfer ban for similar breach of the rule to which Chelsea um, committed. What's your reaction to that and do you think it will help your appeal? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer <laughs> and uh, I don't know the details and the differences between their case and our case. So I can't answer that question as such. Um, yeah, I don't know enough, actually, I'm afraid, sorry. I'm not dodging it, I genuinely don't, and I don't want to comment on something that I have 
don't have a true understanding of the details. Of course, the ban is something that's there for us at the moment. We'll try and hopefully, possibly in January it may change, but if not, I'm working the same way anyway. Okay, Frank, John. Is, is Tommy a strong character if you had to have a chat with him? So what must be going through his head this week? Yeah, I've spoken with Tommy and he is a strong character uh, and I love his character. He's infectious around the place. Um, a confident boy on the pitch, wants to do really well for this football club um, and he has an opportunity to do that this year. So, yeah, he's a, he's a great, great young lad, young man um, and his football career is ahead of him and he, you know, and has experienced something there which is, as I said, not right on all levels um, and it'll be a test of that character that he shouldn't need but he's got great character. What about Gola who was brilliant on Wednesday night? Where do you see his, his best position? Um, well, in midfield, obviously, I think we've, it's been a discussion that has probably been over-talked at times last year and that was me watching it from the outside. But I think with N'Golo Kante, the important thing for me and all my midfield is that we have a flexibility and nobody's pinned down to an absolute structure. And I think we saw elements of that uh, against Liverpool where they have players have a freedom to use their attributes. So his, his idea that he wins the ball probably as well as anyone in world football doesn't mean that he has to sit in front of the back four and do that. He also has too much in his game to drive forward with the ball, to lead midfield areas, to, to win the ball back high up the pitch. So that's what I want to give him the freedom to do. And how are the players physically? Probably could have done with that extra time, yes, but you know that's what it was. I don't like to complain too much. The preparation before wasn't great, so it's been a really difficult week for us on that, those terms. But we do have an extra day almost till Sunday now with the, with the fixture being then. Uh, the players are doing a lot of recovery and not too much training. So, um, yeah, I hope physically we'll be as, uh, as good as we can be. You're up against Brendan Rodgers. What's, what's your relationship? Really good, really good relationship with Brendan. Uh, it was obvious when he was here that he was going to go on to big things. Clever, you know, talk all day about the game. Very forward thinking, very open um, and good with his players. It was always that with the young players here. He's proved that in his career as he's gone onwards. And I've got huge respect for him and I look forward to seeing him. What will your emotions be when you, when you walk out to Stamford Bridge on Sunday? Um, pride, proud to, to manage this club. Um, been back to Stamford Bridge a couple of times since I left here as a player uh, and was lucky enough to have really good support uh, um, on both those times um, and I obviously don't forget the times I had here as a player so it's, uh, it's going to be a, an emotional special day for me but the, that's just for me and the most important thing for us is that we win that's what I'm really worried about and just one on Callum Hudson and how, how close is he to He's getting closer. He's trained the last week or two with the under 23s um, and he's looking good. There is going to be a period of conditioning work for him. The, the injury looks good, which is the great news. And then he's going to have to be fitter than he's ever been because I'm going to want him to run. Um, well, it probably next month, considering the international break, maybe falling at a good time for us. Gives us a couple of weeks to really see how he's that sort of conditioning training is getting on. Um, but it's, uh, it's good news for us, it's good news. Players are coming back, it's sort of gone slightly amiss with the transfer ban and the obsession with young players at the moment, but we are missing five or six, six players from the start, if I include Rhys James in that, big players for the squad. Um, and as they're coming back, they're gonna make us stronger. And Rudiger, William, are they, are they... Yeah, Rudiger is uh, training. Um, whether he's completely match fit is a different thing for the same reasons with Callum, a bit of conditioning, it's a bit of the same with William. William's probably closer. So they're in contention for the weekend, both of them. Moose. Is this a good first home game for you or a potential banana skin of a first home game considering you played well in the two matches back and one year? Uh, aren't they all potential banana skins, I would say, because of the nature of the Premier League and Leicester are, are very much a team that I respect and should be respected for the, the players they've got, the manager they've got and how they performed in recent years. Um, but yeah, we, um, we must be... I think is it's important how our mindset is going to this game because it's been a strange two games and um, we can't think that a really strong performance on Wednesday will replicate itself just because we walk out on that pitch. So it's important that we tackle it head on with a real focus um, because I believe in the quality of the squad and if we are as fit as we are at the minute, which I believe we are even early in the season and have the quality we've got, if we do it right, we should win the game. I think Mason Mount has shown already what you saw at Derby last year and what 
we've seen before that there is definitely going to be a fantastic player in there. Um, how much is this season for you about making sure that he believes all that but he can deliver it as well? Um, well, that, that season is, yeah, I suppose that's my job with all the players. But M Mason, as you say, young player, the great start to my answer is the fact that his attitude is so good. He's so, he's so hungry, but he's very, very understanding of what it needs to be a player. He trains every day with absolute application and focus. Um, as you say, the, the two games he's played now, the impact he made when he came on on Wednesday, the way he played against Manchester United, gives me confidence that this will be a season for him. And it won't be clear. He's, you know, will, will he start every game? Probably not. Um, but if he carries on the way he's going, he's going to be a huge influence for us this season. And finally, on Tammy's character, I mean, I've seen it covering the England under-21s, just what an infectious character he is. Mm. But like everybody, like every striker, he needs a goal sooner rather than later. Unlucky last week at Old Trafford, unlucky midweek with the penalty. Mm. Sunday, I mean, he's not desperate for a goal, but how are you going to tell him that we need you to score, but don't snatch your chance? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, and well, I think Tammy is always desperate to score, and that's one of the things I love about him. He's hungry, he wants to score in training and five sides and shooting practice. Um, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. He needs to be relaxed at the same time as that. Um, but what he does do is he gets in positions to score regularly, and that's what you want to see. And that's again is a bit of a indication of his character that he's not hiding and gets in there. And I think when that goal comes, as they did at Aston Villa last year, and when he was on loan at Bristol City, I think they'll come regularly. And uh, he shouldn't be putting too much pressure under himself. He's a young striker. He's got so many qualities and attributes. I think he's going to be a really big striker for this club. And now's his time, hopefully, to show that. But there's not pressure. I'm just working with him, working with him, doing extra shooting earlier today. And we'll do it every day if he wants for as long as it takes. Because I, I believe when you do that work and you have his quality, it's going to come good. OK, last two, Nazar, and then Sammy. Frank, um, I just wanted to ask you about Rhys James, you're clearly a big fan of his, um, but does that also mean that you might see Zappa Costa leave because there's going to be uh, three uh, full-backs competing for one spot there? That's not clear yet. Zappa's our player, uh, Zappa Costa, and uh, Rhys is injured and he'll probably be another two or three weeks potentially until he's back. So that's a decision that, that will be made as we go on. And I've been really impressed with Zappa Costa's attitude and quality and how he's trained and how he's been. Um, and he's a very good player. So we have to make sure we're happy with the squad by the time the European window shut completely. And that'll be a decision for us. And of course Zappa, because I want players happy. And the professionalism he's shown since he's been here has, has been great. And that can be an ongoing conversation, but he's our player. What about Tim Wayback Yoko? Is that a similar situation that you can kind of assess it until that? Yeah. It's similar with both players. They're obviously haven't, you know, started the season for us and have many minutes. Both of them have shown really good application and not been a problem. And the, the decision will be what's best for us as a club and best for them individually. As well. Okay, last question, Sammy. Frank, after the game of Manchester United, you came under some criticism for the way it played. You think the performance against Liverpool has answered this uh, criticism from certain players? And this is the way you played tactically in that game. Is the way forward for Chelsea the best way to? Well, we need to be um, adaptable tactically, so I think that's what I want to be. I don't want to be a sort of one certain way, game in, game out. I think there's adaptability is important for us, and I think we've shown that in both games. Um, in terms of the Manchester United game, I think some of the criticism was quite lazy because it was a reaction to a 4 0 scoreline. Now, I get that. I get the 4 0. We made errors, they should be criticised. I will be the first to say that. But a lot of our general play was really good. So I'm not, I'm not listening to that. I'm taking out the positives of that game. There were more positives against Liverpool because I thought our performance wholly was really, really good. Um, and we need to now turn it into wins. You know, I'm not interested in criticism from the outside. I'm in, interested in how we work every day and the team that we can be, and I've got full belief in them. OK, cameras off, please.